Okay, so this is what you're going to need. Uh, this is your raw ingredients and a little bit of equipment for making your liposomal vitamin C. So first of all, you need your vitamin C powder. This is the uh, the brand that I currently use, just plain old L-ascorbic acid powder, non-GMO. You're going to need some alcohol. Uh, if you look at the recipe, which I will link below, um, there are different proportions that you can use depending on the ABV uh, of your alcohol. So this is basically 70% by volume. Um, I can't get the, uh, the full strength ethanol here in the UK from anywhere. Um, you can also use 40% proof uh, vodka. You just have to change the, the ratios with the water. Sunflower lecithin. Uh, this one I've already uh, weighed out uh, using this scale here. Just a simple digital scale, but uh, it's quite nice and sensitive and um, yeah, plenty of functionality in that. Then you're gonna want borosilicate glass uh, beaker, at least one, to do your mixing and blending in. This is just a, a glass stirring rod that I use. And I'll leave a link to where I got this one online, yeah, certainly in the UK anyway. And then you're gonna need a blender and this is our very well used Blendtec that we've had for a number of years but which is absolutely fantastic heavy duty blender um, so if you're thinking of getting a blender I can really recommend the Blendtec <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weigh out the uh, I'm going to weigh out the the uh, alcohol spirit I'm going to add the correct weight uh, in water so I do that as a cumulative weight in here on the scale water, alcohol, and then uh, ascorbic acid powder. That will go in the blender. I'll add sunflower less than granules to that. And there'll be a cycle of blending over the next number of hours. Um, the key thing is basically you don't want it to go above a certain temperature. Um, so what I use, actually grab that out of the drawer to keep an eye on that. I use a simple probe thermometer which works really well because you can get it to a good place in the liquid and also when um, you're putting this through the ultrasound bath and the, the top's covered with a film uh, you can use you can obviously pierce that with the with the probe there and get a temperature reading um, but I'll go into that a little bit more when we use the ultrasound bath uh, at a later st stage of the process okay so let's skip forward a few hours one okay so phase one is complete I've dissolved the vitamin C into the water alcohol mixture. I just wanted to do this so you could see this slight color change, this very slight yellowish tint to it. That's a good indication that the vitamin C is um, well dissolved and dispersed. So I dissolved this in the ultrasonic bath. The advantage of that I'll go through uh, when we look at the ultrasonic bath more closely, but essentially I can regulate the temperature as well so I don't burn off too much of the ethanol um, and then mess with the ratios in the solution. So this is going to go <clears throat> into the blend tech. This is going to be added and we're going to blend um, and dissolve the lesser thin granules in this solution here. Okay, this is just to illustrate the ultrasonic bath setup that I've got here. Um, the liposomal vitamin C is ready for what's called the degassing stage. So it's had a final blend and there's quite a lot of bubbles as you can see and half an hour in the ultrasonic bath then cooled and then two more half hour stints in the bath and a lot of that bubble will be gone and a lot more uh, liquid will be present. But this is just to mainly illustrate the setup, very simple, ultrasonic bath. The great thing about this one here is that you've got timer on the right hand side which you can set uh, up to 30 minute intervals uh, and on the left here there is um, a temperature setting as well so I can actually set the internal bath if I wanted to to reach a certain temperature now uh, and it also gives me a readout of what the actual temperature of the water in the bath is um, which is sort of useful because it lets me know within about six degrees centigrade of the temperature of the internal liquid but really to measure that more accurately I just use my probe thermometer because I don't want this to get 
uh, certainly in the second lot of blend, um, second lot of ultrasonic bar cycles, I don't want that to reach uh, over 32 degrees centigrade. So I can always keep an eye on that just by using the probe to pierce the film covering. But this gives me a rough and ready idea. As I say, the temperature in the water bath, which is now 19 degrees C, usually runs at about um, six degrees centigrade higher than what's inside the um, inside the beaker. Uh, the only time I do use that heating cycle is when, for the very first stage of things, when I dissolve the, the vitamin C in the water alcohol solution, and I set this to 40 degrees centigrade, and then set the ultrasonic bath and use a stirring rod, and that gently warms and really helps with the dissolution of the vitamin C powder. Finally, we've got the retort stand here, which is very, very simple. Um, again, I'll leave a link to where this came from online. Simple clamp there, counterbalance was required because the base of that isn't super heavy duty. And then this retort ring, which I've got the beaker sat within. This was actually quite difficult to come across, um, just trying to find one to fit this beaker size. Uh, and you can see there's got a little bit of cling film wrapped around there. That's because actually um, I had to cut the solder of the ring with a hacksaw and I filed the edges, but I felt it wasn't really smooth enough. So if I'm going to have this thing vibrating in here at ultrasonic speeds, I thought I'd better cover the end, the sharp end, with a little bit of a little bit of cling film, and then I'll refile it again today. But um, yeah, this clamp suspension setup really helps to get the to keep the beaker off the floor of uh, of the ultrasonic bath and away from the edges, so it just fits snugly in there. Um, I originally bought this one and had a smaller beaker, so you can see this is a little oversized. Um, so next investment down the road is going to be a larger ultrasonic bath. Um, but this setup works quite well. Obviously, if you're doing more than, you can get larger baths than this, which will fit maybe two, three, four beakers uh, if you're you know, upscaling your operation. But um, that suffices for me. So um, that's the end of this phase, and we'll have a quick look right at the very end. Okay, so one final segment here. You can see that the uh, liposomal vitamin C finished the uh, immersion baths in the ultrasound. A nice mixture there. I've skimmed all the redundant foam off the top. That's basically what you're left over with. And so the final step is then just to final pour this into these uh, bottles. So I'm using brown plastic here. These are homebrew beer bottles, you can use glass jars, anything else like that. Uh, and then it's ready to refrigerate and use as necessary. Okay, I hope this is useful and uh, good luck with your liposomal vitamin C. Just a very quick addendum to uh, this little instructional video. Just be careful with the borosilicate uh, beakers. They're obviously pretty tough for use um, uh, in the ultrasound bath, so on and so forth, but they are vulnerable to cracking and breaking around this edge here. I've lost a couple over the years, uh, using them for various things, uh, but yeah, a blow, particularly at this point here, will very easily crack and break um, your flask. So yeah, just be mindful when you're going through your cleaning process, just to not give that a knock there, otherwise, uh, you know, you'll be in the market for a new one.